Hey guys, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are going to shorten three skirt in a, let's say, no conventional way. Let's go! If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. This is a vintage style dress. It's very cute and my customer wanna shorten it. And she wants to shorten until the white line, but she says that the fabric is too see-through so she wants me to cover it with the material that I'm taking from there. So I will basically fold it there. But as you can see, even if I try, there is a little bit of the material that it will be seen. So the best way to do that is to make a stay stitch. The stay stitch, you can make it two ways. You can go from the top and you can go from the bottom. Going from the bottom, as I'm doing now, is a better technique, but usually the top stitch that you see at the other side doesn't look that great, but you know, with the practice, you can do it. If it's really important for you to do a very nice top stitch, then do it from the other side. And let me show you when I fold it, you see it's just go inside, see the difference. One with the stay stitch and one no, you see? So I have to go all around. And now it's done, so I'm going to my ironing board and I will iron everything. Now it's so easy. I consider that the stay stitch is one of the most important. I hated to do it when I was novice, but the difference that it makes is just amazing. Now is the turn to decide what I'm gonna do when I fold it, how I will finish. And there are many ways to do it. I will start by measuring the white stripe and I will mark that measurement below, but I'm leaving a little bit of seam allowance to finish, of course. And I'm leaving a little bit more because I just took a look of my sergers and the colors. I cannot use it and I don't want to change it if I can do a folding. <sighs> yes, call me lazy. Look where the white thread is. It should be in the serger. So I'm cutting everything around. And as I said, instead of serging, I will do a folding. And I think it will look even better. And I'm measuring how much I need to fold it so it will look nice. And then I will make the folding and I will sew all the way around. And from time to time, I will keep measurement just in case this stripe wasn't really straight. After I finish, I will just pin all around and then I will do a stitch on the ditch, stitch, and it will be invisible and that will keep my fold. And here you go, this is the result. It looks pretty nice, pretty clean. And I think the results, oh my gosh, the short dress looks so nice and cute. This skirt is for the same customer, is same vintage style, and we need to shorten it as well. But you know, this skirt has a lace and we are going to remove that lace and put it back on top. This is a little tricky because when you are removing the serger in the traditional way, sometimes if you just pull the thread and break it, you might damage the lace and you don't want that. So we are going to do, we are going to unloop that serge and then pull the thread out. When you are trying to do that, the first thing you need to know is the direction that this serger has been sewn because you have to open in the opposite direction. And then you have to remove the thread from all the loops and then you just pull it. Let me show you with the red thread. You see, it serves us for something. Good that I kept it. So, you know, you have to recognize all the thread and the first thing you need to do is to open one by one. I like to open first the needle thread and then second I open the loop at the bottom 
this one you see this is the loop at the bottom and then the last one is the loop on the top part and then when you have your three thread then i will just rotate it because remember what i said of the direction and then i will keep just pulling out some more loops so i have enough thread to work with with my hands and then i will just pull it you see you go and pull you first pull the needle and then pull the other two needle pull the other two you cannot have to play with them they go one by one and you know this way is really good because the lace will be intact all good as you can see this is very nice way sometimes you just get a stuck but you just keep doing it and it's really nice if you find this way a little bit tricky Another good way to do is to break, separate it around 8 or 10 inches, more or less, you know, from time to time. And you just pull this thread, and then after that, all the rest of the loop will go. You see? You have the two ways. I prefer this one because I, um, you know, I like to move my hands maybe, I don't know. Because you have just like a one thread, you don't have all those little threads around, so you don't need to clean that. So now it's done. You see, it, it really looks very good. It's all intact. And I just need to open now the top stitch. And, you know, the traditional way I'm going like a every three inches and break a little bit and then pull this thread out and the last one is the easiest is the chain stitch and the chain stitch is just break the loop and you just pull and now look at that i have my skirt with all the lace oops sometimes get a little bit in one place but doesn't matter i have all the lace down and now i just have to shorten it this is the length that I want and I just have to measure where I need to sew it so it has the same length. So I'm marking my sewing line and then from then I need to still mark how much will be my seam allowance. For that I will have to think which way I want to do it and in this case I want to encase the lace instead of surging it. So I need to know how much seam allowance I need. And first of all, I will go and I will mark all around my sewing line. You know, because the print is a line, I could just follow the line, but the problem is that the line doesn't match in the side. So it's not kind of follow the line because it's not a straight. Now I'm marking what I need to do fold fold and then I will just mark everything around. I need one inch and one quarter which is the width of my ruler so that makes it very easy to mark everything and then cut it for sewing. Today we are a little bit busy and all the machines are occupied. They are not leaving me use any so my colleague is the one that is sewing this and first we are going to sew in the sewing line as i show you before and then he's going to fold fold and then do a stitch you see that way the lace will be encased and it will be very clean and very nice now is the time to finish with the top stitch in this case he thought that a second top stitch would look better and i think he was right so he did a second top stitch and look at the results it really looks very nice i think it looks better than the original and the skirt shorter look fantastic of course this is a preference do you guys prefer the skirt longer or shorter for yourself let me know in the comments 
And this one is addressed. Of course, you know how to do the van robot. I've been asked many times, how do you measure those dresses? So what I do is to ask the customer to try on the dress with her right shoes on. And then I mark where the dress touched the floor. In this case, I was able to pin together the dress and the lining, but this is a very rare case. Usually I just pin the dress part and then I measure it again for the lining. So my customer want the dress half an inch shorter than the pin. So I just mark all my pins and then I calculate how much I need for hemming. In that case, I want to do a one eighth of the inch hem. So technically I need one quarter, but usually I make it just a little bit bigger. So I, I leave three eighths of the inches. So I will basically cut my dress just above the line that I made. Because of the material, I use a very sharp scissor and I have those scissors just to cut that. And of course, I will use my band roll. We all know how to use it. And uh, as you can see, the mark that I did half an inch is matching perfectly with my hand. That gives me a peace of mind. That's why I do it. I do two or three of those marks just to be sure that I did the right job. And here you go, it's done, it's very easy. It produces amazing results. So guys, as you can see, these were three very easy, but interesting ways to shorten skirts. Please let me know in the comment, which one did you like more? And if you find this video useful, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, Bye!